Hello and welcome to the Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. In this segment, uh, we're going to have a conversation with Dr. John Termini. He's joining us to talk about how higher than normal blood sugar levels are linked to people with diabetes have increased risk of developing cancer. And uh, he's been studying this link for, for more than a decade. Welcome to the program, Dr. John Termini. Thank you for taking the time. Well, thank you, Neil. Thanks for having me. What is your, your specialty? Well, actually, I'm a chemist by training and I've been at City of Hope here for for a while and we've been we study DNA damage and the chemistry of that and how metabolism in the body or or environmental exposures uh, affect DNA damage or cause DNA damage and what the impact for that is on human health and we've been become very much interested in the diabetes problem for a number of years now because the elevated, the high levels of circulating glucose and the hormonal imbalances of diabetes can seem to have an impact on uh, DNA damage. And we want to really understand how that relates to the disease and specifically how that can, you know, increase the susceptibility or the risk for folks getting cancer. Now, are we talking anyone that has diabetes or are we talking about just higher than normal blood sugar levels, which doesn't necessarily mean diabetes or even pre-diabetes, does it? That's true. And um, hyperglycemia, well, the elevated blood sugar really seems to be the thing that uh, we feel promotes this this kind of DNA damage. So obesity, even without having frank diagnosis of diabetes, also has been shown, well, shown earlier, in fact, to, to increase uh, risk for cancer. So I think it really has to do with um, the blood sugar aspect of it and and being elevated and having uncontrolled uh, blood sugar or difficulty in controlling blood sugar. That really is the is the issue that uh, study and you because for example, give you an example, we can take cells, just you know cells and culture them and just put elevated high glucose in there, the kind of glucose levels that would be. You know, circulating in a patient um, with hyperglycemia, and we can see we can see this kind of damage occur. So it's really the the elevated blood sugar that's the key. What is it about sugar that I guess breaks down and damages DNA, yet seems to um, fuel cancer cells? Well, so yeah, that's a great question. I mean, sugar. Got, and not just not just glucose, but I mean other kind, many kinds of sugars. They're they're sort of similar in chemical structure, and they have a very unusual chemistry. So we've, they're used as fuel, as you as you note, and and it, actually in that process of of being utilized uh, by fuel as fuel, there's it's broken down into into other uh, smaller molecules, and and those those molecules can be very reactive. So even though glucose itself is not very reactive. When it gets metabolized, it can create smaller molecules, which which are then very reactive, and they can react with a whole host of things, not just with DNA, but they react with proteins. And this this actually has been studied uh, for many years. Interestingly, the food industry, the food uh, scientists, were the first to notice these reactions of sugar breakdown with with proteins, and then later with DNA. So it's um, it's kind of a double-edged thing. I mean, you have the requirement for energetic requirements that require glucose, but there's a lot of downstream pathology that's associated with the reactions of glucose. Once, once this DNA is damaged, the body tries to repair damage. Is, is this uh, inhibiting the repair? Does it make it so that the cells uh, and just cannot repair themselves on any level, allowing them to be you know, more susceptible to cancer? Yeah, that's so. So, normally, yes, we repair DNA. It's constantly being damaged um, by by reactions in the body and by environment, by sunlight, by carcinogens that we ingest, and and it's 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 a pretty robust and amazingly complex system. One of the one of the things we saw in in our work with with both the, in little cell culture models and in, in mouse models of diabetes is that this ability to repair damage and and actually the specific kind of damage that's caused by sugar is not shut off entirely but it's inhibited significantly as a result of meta- metabolic effects of high sugar and that combination with the exposure of the elevated circulating glucose really accelerates this form of damage. So it's a combination of two things. 
the elevated glucose is not only damaging DNA and also proteins, but it's also inhibiting the body's ability to repair it. And that's why we could measure significantly higher levels in, in our models and in animal models and, and recently in people. We're starting to see this effect from a, a clinical study that we've been doing. In increasing the risk of uh, developing cancer, if you are living with, with this condition, does it also complicate treatment for cancer if you are also diabetic uh, to a certain degree? Yes, well, it, it does uh, complicate uh, treatment. In fact, um, chemotherapy itself actually... Uh, yeah, it's in about already 20, complicated, yeah. Yeah, I mean, but it, it can actually induce diabetes as well. Ah. So... Uh, yeah, so it's a very significant health issue to treat folks that have uh, diabetes who then develop cancer. Uh, and, and you have to be careful with the drugs that are used. Uh, some of the drugs can affect DNA repair, and some of those drugs actually damage DNA. A lot of cancer drugs, anti-cancer drugs, have that effect. Uh, and they also have hormonal effects, which can stimulate uh, diabetes in, in stimulate diabetes uh, in patients who are being treated for cancer. Uh, what about the drugs that the diabetic is on without having the cancer? Could that cause any damage that um, lends itself more to, to being susceptible to cancer? Well, actually, drugs, that's a good question. I mean, drugs that, that are used to treat diabetes uh, actually have been shown in some cases to actually lower significantly by as much as 30 to 50% the chances of getting cancer, and, and particularly there's a lot of excitement around metformin, which is very commonly prescribed uh, for folks with, with diabetes to maintain their blood sugar, but also metformin, an effective metformin also seems to stimulate in some studies they've shown. We haven't done this work. Other folks have done the work that sh has shown that metformin can actually stimulate repair of DNA in addition to its glucose-lowering effects. Um, so that, that actually may be, and there's, there's a little bit of a controversy whether metformin actually does a lower risk, but there's this, enough data from some studies and even studies where they've pooled much of the published literature a type of study called a meta-analysis that seems to indicate that that effect is real. So that, uh, that might be, um, might, that might be used as a chemo preventive agent. Mm -hmm. And that's been suggested as well that metformin could maybe be, uh, prevent the onset or lower your risk, your susceptibility for cancer. Let's talk about uh, diabetes in young people. Um, more and more young people are, are presenting with, with diabetes. Are they as much risk as someone who is obese and diabetic or someone who is much older and diabetic? Uh, that's, that's a great question. I mean, 12, I think the uh, data shows from the, from the Center for Disease Control that like 25% of children between 12 and 19 are classified as obese, which is a huge risk factor for, for developing cancer. So it's, this is going to be a major problem. Um, and, and more people are not only living longer with cancer, but because of the increase in rates that we're seeing in the young, it's expected to be a significant health problem. Well, um, we'd like to learn some more uh, about uh, City of Hope and uh, about your research as well. Where can we go online and get some more information uh, about both? Uh, well, www.cityofhope.org, and uh, would be the would be the the link. And uh, we have a, a wonderful program, a major program, uh, type one diabetes center at City of Hope that's funded by the Wynack Family Foundation. Uh, Art Riggs uh, is with the leader of the program at City of Hope, and he's, uh, we have a long history in that type of research. The synthetic insulin, the first synthetic insulin called Humulin, was actually developed here at City of Hope. So there's a tradition of, of diabetes research, and we're really so, so glad and fortunate to be part of that program. Thank you for joining us here on the program. Lots of great information. And uh, we'll uh, head on over to that website uh, as soon as, as we can. Thanks uh, for joining us, Doctor. Thank you, Neil. Take care now. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, for this segment. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.